Hi guys, so today we're going to be reading this book called The Legend of Jeffrey. And I wanted to read this book to you guys because um, I got it from Toys R Us and well, on my birthday and I really miss Toys R uh, Us and this is my favorite book. And, and I hope you guys love it as much as I do. And I really miss Toys R Us since it closed. So let's start reading the, so, the Legend of Jeffrey. Written by Pero, illustrated by Dubrava Kolanovic. Jeffrey was a very busy giraffe. There were tasty leaves to munch on, colorful friends to meet, and super fun games to play all day long. Every night, Jeffrey was enchanted by a zillion dazzling stars in the sky. One more night, Jeffrey decided he wanted to touch a star. He climbed up the highest hill he could. Could fine and stretched until the top tip of his nose touched the lowest star. And when it did, the whole sky came to life. Jeffrey watched the stars twinkle until he could not keep his eyes open any longer. Under these stars, surrounded by the things he loved, Jeffrey was home. The next morning, when he woke up, Jeffrey felt different. Inside, a little bit more special than usual. And he looked different, too. His brown spots had turned into sparkling stars. If that wasn't strange enough, there was also a little monkey trying hard to get his attention. I'm Maya, announced the friendly monkey. Cool stars. You want to play? she asked. Of course Jeffrey wanted to play. He watched Maya swing from branch to branch, and then he gave it a try. But giraffes were not meant to swing branch to branch. So he made up a different game. Jeffrey was pretty good at this one. He and Maya were having so much fun that they didn't even notice that what? that a pride of lines had circled them. Hello, dessert, said the largest lion, licking his chops. Uh, uh, actually, my name is Jeffrey, stammered the giraffe. Would you like some nice sweet uh, apricots? Jeffrey offered a hope, hopeful, shaking with fear. The lion was about to take a bite out of Jeffrey when he noticed the gir giraffe's coat. The giraffe's coat. Stars! He exclaimed. This is no ordinary giraffe thing. The lion bowed down to Jeffrey as he explained. There is a famous legend that one day an animal covered in stars will appear and bring awesome fun to the world. The lion all nodded. Jeffrey was covered in stars. But could it be true? I'm not a legend. I'm just Jeffrey, he told them. The lion smirked. Well, if you're not the legend, then you're lunch. Jeffrey quickly agreed that he was absolutely positively the star-covered wonder of the legend. The lion told him kindly, You have the gift of awesomeness. You must follow the stars to find your destiny. But before he followed the stars, 
Jeffrey wanted to find out what exactly was so boss, awesome about him. He challenged Charlie the Cheetah to race. He lost. He did not have awesome running powers. He challenged Fanny Gun the Flamingo to a standing on one leg contest. He lost again. He did not have special balancing power. He thought maybe, just maybe, he could fly. Nope, no flying powers. <laughs> I totally wouldn't think Jeffrey had flying powers. That'd be silly. He's a giraffe. Maybe you just need to follow the stars and figure out your awesomeness along the way. Suggested Maya. The only star I can see are over there. Jeffrey pointed out in the distance. Jeffrey and Maya made their way across the dry, golden grass, and whenever they, whenever they went, the grass turned lush and green, as if it, by magic. As they got closer, they realized the stars were actually twinkling lights struck on a big, beautiful ship. This looks like the next step to our journey," said Maya, as two, the two friends hugged goodbye. Jeffrey boarded the ship, excited to see what the stars would lead him to. Oh look! Here's Jeffrey thinking. I think I see Toys R Us here. Where we got this book from? That's sort of cool. Hmm. I wonder if he's going to Toys R Us. Who knows? After many days and nights sailing across the sea, the ship docked in New York City. Oh, that's cool. Jeffrey got a bite to eat and took a good look around at the buildings. Strange little creatures. He started to feel lost and far from home. He thought about Maya and the lions who told him he, him about the legend. The legend that said he should follow the stars. But which stars? There's so many. Hmm. Wait a minute. Should he follow the stars on the Broadway? No, these are probably not the right stars. The giant. Gigantic spinning stars seemed to be calling his name, but it just made him dizzy. <laughs> Maybe he needed to get even closer to the night sky to find out which way. But not that close. <laughs> Or maybe he would be better off figuring this out with his feet on the ground. There's Toys R Us. I see behind him, and the little dog's barking at him. I see that monkey. Doesn't it look like Maya, the one we saw alive? Hmm. Who knows? He was trying to decide which way he should go, when he spied a monkey on the street who reminded him of Maya. Jeffrey lifted the worn little stuffed animal. As he did, the monkey magically came to life. Who are you? Demanded the scrapey stuffed animal. Where is Lulu? Um, that way. Jeffrey pointed at the pedicab, pedicab up ahead, where they could just see the red pom pom on the. Little girl's pink hat. Hey, he and the monkey jumped in a taxi and pointed the way, but there were so many cars that soon they couldn't see 
the red pom-pom, or any sign of Lulu at all. So they hopped out. That's sad. Lulu must be missing him. And sat down on the sidewalk. Thank you, said the monkey. My name is Patches, by the way. I'm Jeffrey, he replied, taking the monkey's paw in his hoof. I'm. How did you do that magic thing? Patches wanted to know. Magic thing, said Jeffrey. You know, I can never talk or do anything else until you picked me up. Seriously? If you don't believe me, let's see if your magic works on them. Patches suggested, pointed at the store window filled with stuffed animals. Those are a lot. Do you think they're gonna come to life or not? I think so. Write in the comments. So Jeffrey ducked through a big glass door in the most amazing place. He had ever seen. It's Toys R Us, the world's greatest toy store, whispered Patches. There were toy trucks, and trains, robots, and rockets, tents, playhouses, and best of all, there were zebras and elephants and all other animals he grew up with. I think that's his brother. Who knows? But it's a giraffe. Wow. I'm starting to miss Toys R Us myself when it closed. That was sad. Patches said, "Okay, Jeffrey, now try your magic." Jeffrey's eyes lit up. His stars began to shimmer as he ran through the store and, with the slightest tap of a hoof, brought the toys to life. A very serious chess piece. The queen took it all in the scooters. Scooting toy trains, tooting and superheroes soaring overhead. It's our birthday," she announced to Jeffrey. "What's a birthday?" he asked. "A birthday is the day you are born, and today is the day you brought us to life." Well, if the queen said so, thought Jeffrey, it must be true. That night, the toys had the most awesome birthday party ever. Ooh. That's fun. I wish I could be there. Ah, and there's even a balloon that says "Toys R Us." That's where this book came from. Early the next day, a parade of exciting little children began to fill into Toys R Us. "Happy birthday!" said one sweet grandma to her young grandson. "Now let's see what awesome toys we can find you." When Jeffrey heard "Happy birthday," he His velvet ears perked up. A real-life birthday. Jeffrey began to stack home wooden blocks. Happy birthday, said him. The little boy ran to the tower of colorful blocks, and his grandmother smiled. Happy birthday, said the man, a man in pink spire pants. To his daughter, it's fine. A great present for you. Jeffrey went to work again. Excuse me, he said to the little girl. Every artist needs an easel. Her eyes lit up. Ooh, I wonder what he's gonna do. Seems like he painted a smiley face with his tail as a brush. <laughs> That's silly. Do you see what I see? I think it's Lulu. The red pom pom. I think she's looking for a monkey. Oh no! Thank you," whispered the easel to Jeffrey. "Thanks, Jeffrey," said the colorful blocks. Things were going so well that Jeffrey was surprised to see Patches looking a little sad. Jeffrey tried to give his friend a big hug, but when Your neck is six feet long. A hug can get a little messy. <laughs> I get what they said that for. <laughs>
Patches and Jeffrey tried to clean up, but that only made things worse. <laughs> so they decided it was best to scoot out of the way. That's a better idea. And let the employees work. Patches smiled at Jeffrey. You are a really good friend, he said. But I miss being home with Lulu. A shiny red fire truck pipe piped in. I would love to find a home. We would all love to find homes and kids to be friends with. Added a funny little robot. Well then, I will find a home for each of you, Jeffrey promised. His stars began to glow, and the toys hummed with excitement. Ooh, I wonder what's gonna happen next. One by one, Jeffrey went about finding the perfect child to take home. Each of his new friends. The robot went with that little kid. The fire truck with that. Ooh, ooh, look at that! That's awesome. Jeffrey and Patches looked around at all of the happy children heading out of the store with their new toys. When suddenly they spotted Lulu. They hopped on a scooter and raced over to Lulu just in time. I think this monkey will be. Perfect for you, Jeffrey told her. Patches, I thought I would never see you again. Lulu squealed. She hugged her long lost friend and looked up at Jeffrey. Thank you for finding him. Here's Lulu hugging Patches. Looking out at the stars in the city sky. Jeffrey was happy. He knew now that his destiny was to find the perfect toys for children, the perfect home for toys. Under these stars, surrounded by the friends he loved, Jeffrey was finally home again. The end. And that was the story, the legend of Jeffrey. I hope you like this book. I know I really do. And if you want to find this, you can go find this as Toys R Us. Bye.